Welcome to worship. We are so grateful that you joined us for online worship. We are First Christian Stillwater, and we strive inside or outside these walls to be a place for all to connect to God's love. We can't see your beautiful faces this morning, but if you are here via Facebook Live, we encourage you to check in, comment, and say hi. It's a simple way that we can find meaningful connection with you. Today is the last day of our summer series, Influencers, and we will conclude this final Sunday with a teaching on the Lord's Prayer. So grab your Bibles if you have one and like to follow along. We'll be in the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses 2 through 4. Light a candle if you find that helpful in reminding you that this is a special time set apart for God. And grab elements for communion. The table of God is open and all are welcome. And if you would please join me in opening this worship service with a word of prayer. God of creation, our Father whose name is holy and yet who desires greatly to connect with God creation. Guide us today through this service of worship. Help us in meaningful and powerful ways connect to you, whether it be through a prayer or a reading of scripture or song or word. God, we thank you for your desire to be in relationship with us. Prepare our hearts and minds so that we can step rightfully into that relationship. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. God sent his son. They called him Savior, Savior. 
my prayer life is vibrant and it's active daily. I like to commune with God at nighttime. I get under those warm covers and I kiss my wife goodnight. Then I just start talking to God, just me and God, tell him everything. <sighs> Makes me just sleepy just thinking about it. And there I am just laying in bed, laying out my request to him and he's hearing me and I know that I'm in good company with him. Where was I? The efficiency of one's prayers are directly congruent to the position of one's body. Therefore, the legs should be saying, God, help me. Amen. There are times that me and God do not talk, and that is not God's fault, that is mine, I just get so busy. And so when I do end up talking to God, I really just try to impress him, give him a show, to just to show him how much I love him. So excuse me, will you, as I pray to God. Oh, Heavenly Father, oh, Heavenly Father, beseech me not unto thee, how now? Brown cow, oh, thy soul is so dry, and if I can just catch a morsel of who you are, so verily, merrily, down the stream. God, I, I just want to be used by you, God. I want, I want to be salt and light and light and salt and sight and love and peppers and oregano and pepperoni and black olives and those little bit. When I like to get my prayer on, uh, there's some things I keep in mind. Um, I think it's totally awesome that uh, God is like Santa Claus and he wants to give you the things that you want. Therefore, you need to keep lists of things. My list currently has 745 prayer requests on them. So then when I go to the Lord in prayer, it looks a little something like this. I'll just pray real quick. Um, let's see. The uno thing on my list is my mom. And so I'll pray for her now. Dear Heavenly Father, I lift up this sweet salt of the earth lady that you have blessed me with to be my mother. And I tell you thank you. And although I know that I'm called to respect her and I give her all due respect, there's also an issue of something she truly needs. And that is to stop a yapping. Lord, she yaps. And she doesn't know how to stop yapping. So could you please make her mute just for a day? Nothing permanent. Don't hurt her. I love her. Just mute her. Take your big God remote and push mute on her channel. That would be great. Henceforth, I would go on and pray all 746 things. God, you are greater than anything this world has to offer. And I can't wait for you to come back and get us. But until that time comes, would you help me just to, just to live my life day after day as if I'm just walking hand in hand with you? God, I, I have a lot of needs. And I have a lot of wants. And sometimes I get those things confused. Help me to just trust you to meet my needs. And be thankful when you give me those other things that I just want. God, I have blown it so many times today, and I'm sorry. Thank you for your forgiveness. I don't take it for granted. And God, as I start this day out, I, I'm just reminded that this world is filled with so many spiritual potholes. Please help me to walk in such a way where I won't stumble so much. And as I'm going through this day, God, Help me to live my life in such a way that would bring you glory and honor. May the life that I live be a life of worship to you. Amen. The Lord's Prayer, Words of Hope and Happiness by Rick Warren. Read by Tucker and Brimley Shrenak. Our Father, which art in heaven, God is my Father in heaven, who made me. He will always love me. He will never leave me, so I will never be lonely. Thank you, God, for loving me. 
hallowed be thy name. God is good to me, so I honor him. I honor God's name by loving him, trusting him, obeying him, and thanking him. Thank you, God, for being so good to me. Thy kingdom come. When I do what God wants me to do, he is the king on, of my heart, and I am filled with joy. Thank you, God, for being great. Thy will be done in earth. God made me for a purpose. He has good plans for my life, so I am not afraid. Thank you, God, for your plans. As it is in heaven. Heaven is the happy place where God lives. One day I'll get to live there too because I love and trust in Jesus, God's Son. Thank you, God, for heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. God has promised to take care of all my needs, so I will trust in him and not worry. God, thank you for my gifts. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. When I make mistakes, God always forgives me. So when other people make mistakes or hurt me, I forgive them too. Thank you, God, for forgiving me. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God helps me to do what is right and good, and he helps me to not do what is wrong. I can ask God for help any time. Thank you, God, for protecting me. For thine is the kingdom. I am part of God's family, which will last forever and ever. I trust in you, God. In the power. When I am tired, I can ask God for energy and strength. God, please make me strong. In the glory forever. When I trust in God completely, it makes him smile. I love you, God. Amen. Dear Lord God, our Father, we bow before you this morning in worship to you. In this quiet moment, may we be in humble submission as we surrender to you. We come before you, Lord, with many requests and know you hear our pleadings. Forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for our sins. We pray for those who are hurting, who have lost loved ones, who daily suffer physically, emotionally, those who face long-term suffering, those who are fearful, those who are struggling with unspoken worries. Lord, give us peace, your peace that ensures that we do not walk alone. Give us strength to face trials in our life. Give us a clear mind to sort out the many issues we face in this time. You are our guide, our light, our shepherd. May we walk moment by moment in abiding faith in you, Jesus, as our Redeemer, knowing that you abide with us always, in all situations, in all times. May we ever keep our eyes on you, O oh Lord, as you walk with us. May our hearts and our words be full of thankfulness to you as we put our trust in you for each moment of our day. May we ever be thankful for the many blessings you have given us. Help us, Lord, to be joyful witnesses of your great love. In your name we pray this. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
teaching us to be trendy or hip, not political influence pulling us to this side or that side, not, not marketing influence seducing us to buy this or that, but influence provided by the Word of God shaping our lives the way God designed. I hope you have found it to be powerful. Isaiah 55.11 promises this, My word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish the purpose for which it was intended. God's word teaches, rebukes, corrects, and trains in righteousness so that the people of God can be equipped for every purpose of God. We're going to flip the order just a little bit today. Typically, I do a review and then focus on the passage for the day. But we're going to start with the conclusion of the Lord's Prayer. That's our focus for today. And then we'll do a review of what we've covered throughout the course of the summer. So buckle up. It's going to be a great ride. We begin with today's phrase, Give us this day. Our daily bread and I wonder how many times we've said those words and I wonder also if even in the many times we've recited those words if we really meant those words give us this day our daily bread give us what we need today most of us if we're honest would be angry with God if he gave us only what we needed for today we like security. We don't want to know that we have enough for today. We want to know we have enough for we have enough to sustain us throughout the course of our lives. Most of us don't really even know what it is we need. We are so accustomed to having so much more than just what we need. A lot of us have most of what we want, which is quite different. And yet this is a principle that has been reinforced throughout the course of Scripture from the beginning all the way through to the very end. You remember the story of the Israelites and their quest for the promised land. And they had escaped captivity in Egypt and they were free. But in their freedom, they found a time of wandering in the wilderness. And there was a lack of food. There was a, there was a scarcity of food and provision, and they cried out for God who provided manna from heaven, bread, bread raining down. They were told that they could only take what they needed for the day, but instead they hoarded and stored, and it didn't turn out well for them. Then later we found the same group of people grumbling and complaining that they wanted meat. They were tired of just bread. Sound familiar? Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus taught us to pray this way for good reasons. First, constant need keeps us in constant and continual communication with God. If we focus on just what we need for this day, in this day, then we're back at God's doorstep tomorrow, focusing on the needs for that day, and then the next day, and the next day. We have to get with God again and again, and that's what God desires. God wants us in constant communication with Him, 
not only about our needs, but about everything in life. But don't you see, getting with him on a daily basis is the beginning, the fundamentals, the training that equips and enables us to learn the value of continual and constant prayer too. If we really live this principle, we eliminate worry. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 34 says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. If we are focused on the fact that God is giving us exactly what we need in this day, we're not worried about tomorrow. We're confident that if he provided today, he will provide tomorrow and the next day and the next. Three, when we focus on the gifts each day brings, we are so much more apt to be grateful. So often we overlook the good things that God gives us because we're focused on what we don't have yet. Another thought came um, while I was focusing on that phrase, give us this day our daily bread. Last week we were eating out with my family at the pepperoni grill and before the meal, they brought out loaves of fresh, baked, warm bread. Warm, fragrant, right out of the oven. There are few things that compare with a freshly baked loaf of warm bread. The aroma, uh, the texture, the taste, it is an experience in and of itself. And if we have that image in mind as we say those words, give us this day our daily bread. It brings a whole new meaning. God's gifts, they are amazing. But how often do we recognize them or how often do we miss them completely because we're impatiently waiting on the rest of the meal to arrive? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I grew up with three versions of that statement. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I don't remember who taught it or when, but I do remember being taught this meaning of that phrase. God, forgive me the way I forgive others. Hmm. That's probably a bit troubling for most of us, especially these days. There's most likely someone who you struggle to forgive, someone whose debt you're not willing or ready to erase. It's comforting to hear that God forgives us, not so much to hear that God forgives us in the way that we're willing to forgive others. Here's my understanding. It's not possible to forgive others without completely comprehending and understanding and accepting the way that God forgives us. It's also not possible to understand and accept the fact that God forgives us without first being willing to forgive others. The two work hand in hand with one another. You know, this phrase has been one of the most beneficial in my faith walk. Every time that I'm tempted to judge or harbor anger, um, justified or not, I remind myself of my list of sins, the things that have been wiped clean from my list, the way that I have been forgiven. And it makes it much easier to forgive and overlook the sins of others. This week, I was reminded of something really stupid that I did in my past. Got your attention, didn't I? Your wheels are spinning. What was it that Sandra did in her past? What could it be? Well, I hadn't thought about it for a long time, but this week I did a lot. And there were a couple of voices in my head. One voice that reminded me of the stupidity and made me ashamed. And guilty. 
And the other that said, it doesn't come to your mind to bring you guilt or shame. It comes to your mind so you can be forgiven. Ask, and you'll be forgiven. It's as simple as that. It's gone. Wiped clean far as the east is from the west. How can we, as recipients of such a gift, not be willing to share the same gift with others? Lead us not into temptation. We can spend a lot of time digging through commentaries on this one. Why would Jesus direct us to ask God not to lead us into temptation? Does God do that? Does God lead us into temptation? Well, Scripture is clear. God does not tempt. James 1.13 says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. However, in Matthew 4.1, Scripture says this, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So God allows us to enter into places where we will be tempted. Know this, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you will be able to endure it. God allows us into places where we can be tempted, but he will not allow us to be tempted beyond our ability to escape. Now listen to what Jesus teaches us to pray. Lead us not into temptation. Other verses say, bring us not into temptation. You realize you can ask God not to bring you into those places, not to allow you to go into those places. That's powerful. It's a tool that every one of us wants in our toolbox. Do we understand what we say? Do we mean what we say? Do we believe what we say? Let's look over the course of the summer, beginning with the book of Job where we learned that although Job was righteous and devout, although he was a good man, he suffered. He suffered greatly, and yet even in that suffering, he remained faithful and devoted to God. Life brings suffering for all, the just and the unjust, the righteous and the unrighteous. Suffering comes upon each and every one. We learned how not to bring comfort, we watch Job's friends fail and easily identify these guys are wrong. They are off target. They are off base, off base, and yet we make the same mistakes. Hopefully, we learned through the course of the summer how we can more effectively offer and bring comfort to those in need. We are not fixers. We can't always fix every problem, but we can sit with someone who has a problem, and sometimes that's the most powerful fix of all. We were reminded that even in times and even in the midst of the most great, the greatest of suffering, hope lives. And can I tell you that I have seen this? Hope dies hard, if it dies at all. It can be diminished. But even a tiny amount of hope can bring incredibly effective change. Remember Job's words, I know my Redeemer lives and I will see his face. And as you remember those words, remind your spirit and soul of the power of positive words, of hope that rises up and brings results. We learned that Job does meet God. Through a whirlwind tour of creation, Job's vision is expanded. He's able to take his eyes off of his suffering and see the world around him. He is invited back into life again. And just in case you were tempted to think, yeah, sure, Sonia, that's great. It's a story from the Bible. It's very um, positive. It's very encouraging. It's very hopeful. But 
Does it really happen today? Yes. Yes, sir, and yes, ma'am, it does. And I've got a great example. You know, there is a show that Rick and I have been watching on Netflix. It's kind of a documentary. It's hosted by Zac Efron, and it's called Down to Earth. Now, if you know Zac's story, he, at a very young age, was given everything this world has to offer, fame, fortune, and everything that comes along with it. And then, as so often happens, all of that came crashing down. He made one bad choice after another and was taken into a very dark place. And yet, he was brought out of that dark place through many experiences, one of which is documented in this series where he seeks and searches for true joys and pleasures and experiences in life that bring hope and happiness and peace and joy. And I'm telling you, all of those stories confirm what Scripture has already told us. If there's anything out there, it's world confirming the truth of Scripture. Watch and see for yourself. We learned through the story of Job that God restores everything that was lost. And Job learns to choose life. And guys, that's what it is. It's a choice. It's not the things that we have. It's not the things that we lose. It's a choice in the positives and the negatives and the ins and outs of life to choose to live joyfully, hopefully, peacefully, and lovingly. We learned through the study of Job that there really isn't a satisfactory answer to the problem of innocent suffering. If you're looking for an answer to the why, you'll spend all of your time in focus and you'll never really come up with an answer. Still, Job does provide several faithful responses to suffering. That's what we learn from the book. Not that suffering won't exist, but that it will. But there are ways that we can respond to that suffering that are effective. One of those is speaking to God honestly and directly. Another is trusting that God will answer. It's risking living and loving even when we've experienced great pain and it's delighting in a world that is wild and beautiful and risky and it's trusting in a faithful God who created and sustains it all. We moved from Job to 2 Corinthians and we learned that or we were reminded yet again of the importance of bringing comfort and care to those in need. And can I just say, that's another one of the threads that weaves throughout Scripture and binds it all together. We are here to care and comfort others in need. We learned that uh, we are to study and practice forgiveness. That there is power in forgiveness, but it's not just knowing it, it's applying it that really matters we learned that we are treasure in clay jars, that there is a light that shines within each and every soul, some burning brightly, some that are dim, and yet that light is housed within. It's housed within exteriors that are sometimes hurt and broken, and it's our job to keep everyone's light burning through the darkness. We learn to walk by faith and not by sight, learning that as people of faith, our hope and our confidence remain steadfast in the, in the faithful promises of God, not in what we see with our eyes, but in what we know in our hearts to be true. We learn that we are called to be a people of generosity, giving not out of our abundance, but even in our poverty, we learned that community means sharing in one another's pain and joy as well as sharing in one another's poverty and wealth. Now those are simple words to hear. They're much harder truths to apply and yet is our life's mission to do that. Again, we hear we need to care for one another. If we are blessed, we are blessed so that we can be a blessing to others. It's our life purpose to use our gifts for the benefit of others. And we conclude our summer series with four messages on the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, our perfect parent, desiring to give us protection and provision and unconditional love. Hallowed be thy name. We 
We are God's marketing plan. We reveal God's glory to others through our words, our actions. We connect others to God's love. We are the revelation of God's glory to the world. Thy kingdom come. We learned it's already here. We just get to be the builders for the master design by the master architect. We are the yeast that permeates the dough. We bring joy and peace and hope and love. It's our calling. It's our privilege. It's our mission. And today, we conclude with these words. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation. Hopefully, the way you say that prayer will never be the same. Not a recitation, but words spoken with understanding, offered to God straight from the heart. We've experienced a powerful summer of influence, influenced by God's word so that we in turn can influence the world. Go be influencers. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. This table, the table of God, is a reminder of those things. We are reminded that when we are nourished by God, our lives are rich and full. We are reminded at this table that we are forgiven. We are in turn to forgive others. The table of God is set for you, where all are invited and all are welcome. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the loaf, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body. It is for you. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the body of Christ. It is for you. And this is the cup of salvation offered for all. Eat and drink in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to take communion again this morning. We ask you to bless this cup and loaf for the nourishment of our bodies and souls. We are so thankful to have the comfort you provide to us during this very trying time. We ask you to be with all of those who are working so hard to care for our sick and hurting as well as those who are striving to develop treatments and prevention for this disease, which has affected so many people around the world. Give us the willingness and compassion to do what we can to protect those around us as we do our best to carry on with our lives. We are so thankful for the many blessings we receive and for the forgiveness of our sins through the sacrifice of Jesus. In this time of great stress, help us remember him. In Christ's name, amen.
Typically, we end the service with a call to discipleship. This week, we'll conclude with a stewardship moment. This week, we kick off our first Christian church stewardship campaign, Faithful, Hopeful, Loving. Each worship service for the next couple of weeks will include stories of influence and impact provided by the faithful, hopeful, loving stewardship of this congregation. Many of you will receive, will receive mailings, you will receive text messages and emails. We will do everything we can to fulfill our role in educating you on the amazing opportunity you have to be a part of God's work in the world offered through this congregation. Our 2021 general budget will be determined by your pledges. We can accomplish or what we can accomplish is dependent in large part on your contributions. But let me emphasize, our success is dependent on your faithful obedience to follow God's lead and inspiration in what and how and to whom you give. There is lots of work to be done. Good work. God's work. We invite you to join us in accomplishing God's work here and now. Hi, my name is Jeff Leffert, and I serve as the director of the Michael and Ann Greenwood School of Music at Oklahoma State University. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to First Christian Church, and thank you for everything that you're doing to make this semester possible for our students at OSU. As you may imagine, the COVID-19 pandemic has created quite a challenging situation for us in regard to space. And in order to secure a location where our university singers, which is our largest major choir, can rehearse, First Christian Church has graciously agreed to open up its beautiful facility for our students. Right now, I'm not sure that we could function in the semester without First Christian Church. And I just wanna say thank you. And thank you, of course, to the First Christian community for everything that you're doing to make this a successful semester. Thank you. Let's pray. God who is ever faithful, God who instills hope, God who loves all at all times, we offer up these stewardship efforts into your hands. We thank you, O oh great architect, for the kingdom that you have designed, and we thank you for the opportunity to build that kingdom. We thank you for the opportunity to be yeast that permeates the dough. God, we pray for your inspiration. We pray for your lead. We pray for your guidance. Speak to our hearts and minds and let us know how we can be a part. Join together those whose efforts can truly make a difference in this world when guided by you. Remind our hearts and souls that with you all things are possible. Remind our hearts and souls that it is your church that you have equipped and enabled to accomplish your mission in the world. We thank you in advance for the opportunity to be a part of it. We thank you in advance for the things that you will do with confidence. They will exceed our greatest hope, expectation, and imagination. Amen. Here's a spiritually uplifting song from the island of Jamaica. I believe you do some mission work. Dirty remarks. Well, there is one. Question. 
questions I really love to ask. What is our place for the for hopeless sinners who have heard all mankind just to sing his own? Yeah. 